Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to bring you through my modeling process and hopefully along the way you'll pick up a few tips. I have a wheel here with a bunch of different objects to model and if we spin the wheel we get a pencil. We all know what a pencil looks like but for some clarity let's just go and find some reference images. I think for this one we'll stick with the standard number 2 HP pencil. I always try to find as many reference images as possible and also some measurements, so either Google them or if you have a real pencil you can measure with the ruler or if you want to be super precise use some calipers. This starts off as a basic cylinder with 6 sides and that gives us the basic shape. I always add in a cube set to the measurement that I need, in this case 15mm. You can just type 15mm into the dimensions and it will convert it into blender units for you. You can do the same with inches. Once the hexagon is the right scale, I can set the Z scale to 17.5cm and, and this is the rough measurement for the pencil. At this point I want to start modelling the details but I don't have a schematic view of the pencil but I do have this reference image and we can model based on this image. If I add a camera to the scene and change the resolution of the camera to match the reference image, then I can drag in the image and we can see it through the camera view. Now we can start moving the camera so that it lines up with the base pencil shape we modelled. It doesn't line up immediately and that's because of the focal length of the camera. Generally, for product shots like this, the photographer would have used a fairly narrow lens like an 85mm or even 100mm, so changing the focal length allows us to match the perspective of the pencil to the reference image. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it can get us fairly close. Once the camera is lined up, I can start modelling using this as the reference point for where things need to be. I added a basic 16-sided cylinder for the eraser and bevel the ends, and for the metal part I use a 32-sided cylinder because I need more resolution to get those indented details. I can then put in some loop cuts where the centre of each of the raised areas are. All I do is add loop cuts to the centre, and then I can select the edge loops and bevel them using the scroll wheel to get three edges. Then if we press Ctrl- it will reduce the selection, leaving us with only the centre loop, and then we can press Alt S to inflate it. For the indented section, I select the entire loop in the centre and I press I to inset the faces, but by default it will inset the selection, but if we press I again it will inset the individual faces. We can then press E to extrude the faces and press Alt S to push them in. I know I want to add a subdivision modifier to this, so I also add what are called holding edge loops to the indented region so that the subdivision doesn't smooth out the whole shape. I can then press Ctrl 1 to add the subdivision modifier and we can see what this does. I can then move these holding edge loops to give me a more or less rounded end to the indents. I also add a couple more edge loops to the raised areas to make them a bit sharper as the subdivision modifier smooths them out a bit too much. Now it's time to focus on the head of the pencil. We want our hexagon shape to transition down into a circle and to give us a bit more geometry for our circle, we can bevel the edges of the hexagon which will give us 18 vertices which will create a nice circle. Now we can extrude the tip of the pencil and with the loop tools add-on enabled, we can right click and choose the circle option which will turn our hexagon into a circle. In Blender it's much easier to turn something into a circle than turn a circle into some other shape, so always keep that in mind. After finishing the model I wasn't entirely happy with the shape of the tip so I thought of a better way of creating the sharpened look. With the base shape of the pencil in place with 18 vertices, I want to create a pencil sharpener object that we can use to cut the pencil. I use a 36 sided cone and use the boolean modifier to cut out this shape from a cube. Then if we use the cube to cut out the tip of the pencil, it will create that natural looking sharpened look. You'll have to do a little bit of cleaning up to create nice topology, but this gives a much nicer look. The base of the pencil is usually crushed a little bit from the metal bit being put on, so I can just scale down the end slightly. Then we can just start making everything fit around each other nicely. The eraser has to fit inside the metal part, and the metal part has to form to match the pencil slightly, so I can do some manual editing to make everything fit. Now I can join everything together and start UV unwrapping. You could leave this model as is and just give each piece a different material, but I want to use a PBR workflow to make this look realistic, so I need to UV unwrap it. UV unwrapping for something like this is fairly simple, you just mark a seam lengthways along the pencil, and then mark a seam at the ends. Because I want this to be as realistic as possible but also keep it low poly, I want to bake the normals so that I have nice smooth shading even with a low poly object. The easiest way i found of doing this is by using a multi-resolution modifier to subdivide the model. The way we bake the normals is by turning the viewport subdivisions down to zero and this will then bake the render subdivisions onto the viewport level so we have a render of two baking to a viewport of zero. With the texture selected in the shader editor, we can change the render engine to cycles and at the bottom you can bake from multi-resolution. This will bake the subdivided model onto the base model, giving us our normal map. For something like this it's a subtle effect but it sharpens up all of the edges of the metal bar and tightens the edges of the pencil. For some other models like this sword, the effect of a normal map can be more extreme. With the pencil unwrapped and our normals baked, we can jump into Substance Painter and start texturing. When making realistic materials, the first thing I always do is bake all of the additional maps within Substance Painter, 
like the ambient occlusion, curvature, and thickness. These maps analyze the model and bake all of the associated textures, and then the smart materials within Substance can use these textures to place dirt in the seams of the model or highlight certain edges. Substance Painter has materials that suit most cases, so I can use the steel preset for the metal section. The eraser gets a basic rubber material, and I can just change the color of it. The tip of the pencil gets this beech wood material, and I can change the projection type from UV to triplanar, which allows me to align the grain with the direction of the pencil. Then for the painted part of the material, I used this varnished wood material and just gave it a fill there on top to change the color, but it keeps the roughness from the wood material. I can then use masks to isolate the different areas. I use the basic brush to draw a rough shape around the tip of the pencil, but to make this a bit more defined, I can use the warp filter, and this gives it a rough edge. Lastly, for the lead of the pencil, I use the charcoal material, and again, I used a mask with the warp filter to give it that rough look along the edges. To create the markings on the pencil, I needed to create some stencils, and for this, I used GIMP. The way to create stencils for Substance Painter is by creating a black base, and your stencil needs to be white. So for this, I just wrote out the text that I wanted in different fonts, and laid them out on the stencil. Then we can import this texture back into Substance, and we can use this as a stencil. As you can see, with the stencil loaded in, it creates an overlay on the screen, and we can just line this up with the model, and when we draw, it will fill in the stenciled area. Now we can just export these maps and set them up in Blender. When importing the textures, we can just hook these directly up to the principal shader, but for everything except the color texture, we need to set the color space to non-color data. We need Blender to know that the metallic, roughness, and normal maps are not color textures. They don't contain any color information, and this will give us much more accurate results when making materials. I can now add in a HDRI to start lighting the scene. In my asset library, I have some HDRIs already set up, and I can just drag and drop these into my scene to change the lighting. For products, you generally want a neutral HDRI, so don't use anything that has too much color tint. Try and keep it as neutral as possible. When rendering with cycles, I always lower the samples to something like 128 or 256 and enable the denoising data render pass. Then we can use the denoise node in the compositor to denoise the image. I want to create a wallpaper of hundreds of pencils, so to do that, we can do some physics simulation. We can add a rigid body and collision to both the floor and pencil. The only difference is that the rigid body on the floor will be set to passive because we don't want it to fall. Now if we press play, the pencil should fall and hit the ground. If we duplicate the pencils, they'll all fall and hit each other, but they're rolling all over the place, so let's make a little box to keep them in. I can make some cubes to act as the walls and again give these a rigid body and collision. Now when we simulate the pencils, it will keep them within the box. Now we can just duplicate the pencils and let them simulate. This is pretty intensive. Blender has to run a physics simulation for each pencil, and each one has its own collisions. What you're seeing here is real time. Unfortunately, something like this is just intensive, but you'll see here that after about 20 frames or so, the pencils have reached a point that I'm happy with. You don't need to let the physics simulation finish, you can pause it at whatever point you like. Now we can just make some wallpaper style renders of our pencils. Something like a pencil can seem pretty easy to model, but there are a lot of small details and they all require different tools and techniques. I think this is a good one to try yourself, because I'm sure you'll learn something new by trying to model something seemingly simple like this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.